up before sunrise again. We've got to drive about 26 miles from Glacier Park up to Pole Bridge. It's mostly paved, but you got to go slow because of the wildlife. And then it is dirt for the last bit. You're going to want to stop at the mercantile, of course, and get some pastries. And the next seven miles is a very rough, very narrow road to the foot of Bowman Lake Campground. The road is being graded now, so it'll be a little bit better next year, but you got to watch out. There are people going way too fast coming the other way, lots of blind corners. There's, it's, it's a rough road. Be careful here. And so we've re-entered Glacier National Park, and we're at the foot of Bowman Lake Campground, which is a first-come, first-served campground. There are 46 sites here. you got to get here early. It's very difficult to get a site here. I'll give you a bunch of front country information here and some more back country information later on but this video will mainly be about showing you the scenery. I'll note a few times on the screen, and you can check the description for more links if you want to skip ahead. And as you can see, the parking for backcountry hiking is very tight. There were only two spaces left after we parked, but the campground host for Bowman Lake said that if a hiker shows up with a permit, they will find you a parking space in the day use or somewhere. So if you have a permit, don't worry about it. You'll find parking. In addition to the campground here, the foot of Bowman Lake has a beach that's great for boating. There's fishing and there's plenty of hiking opportunities in the area for day users. We'll give you an informational tour of the backcountry campground once we get there. One more quick front country thing to show you and we'll get started hiking. Just on the other side of those trees is the hiker parking and over here we have day use park and a little picnic area. No view of the lake from here, but there are some fire pits, campfire circle, and the lake is just a couple hundred yards that way. Uh, there are walk-up permits available as well, but getting the reservation is complicated. You're going to need to go to the National Park website. But I want to point out, do not wash in lakes or streams. Even the biodegradable soap used sparingly 100 feet away from any water, water source and pack out used toilet paper when you are going to the bathroom in the back country. In the pit toilet you can leave your toilet paper. You also got to be extra worried in Glacier about sweat soaked items as you'll see later on in the video. Salt. There are all kinds of animals that will go after your salt items. Look at Roxana all ready to go. Cars behind us. Bowman Lake in front of us. And we're off. We've been waiting a long time to do this one. I'm sure most of you watch My Own Frontier. You know, Joey always says don't use his videos as a guide, but we do use them as help decide which area we want to go to and what, you know, what we could handle. He did a trip with Catherine Gregory. I'll link her video below and his eventually when it comes out. But they did a trip only about 10 days before ours. And you would not believe the difference in weather. We really lucked out. So we'll be hiking to the backcountry campground at the head of Bowman Lake and staying there for two nights and do a nice hike partway up towards Brown Pass. We're just heading along. It's mostly flat for about seven miles. It's going to be a really nice walk in the woods. Something was eaten here. All fur. And Our trail will start and end at the lake shore, but there is a fair amount of up and down. I'm pretty excited to see this area. This section is always uh, in Joey's videos and so on. He's, his batteries are always dead by the time he gets here. It's actually very nice. But it was a fair amount of up and down, about well, 300 feet. Just enough to make you feel like you did some work. There's an off-trail route to the top of Numa Peak, which I'm not sure if it's that one or it might be the one that's kind of obscured back there. It's one of those. I believe you go up and around to the left of that waterfall, something like that. I was reading about it, but it looked way too difficult. And we've just about made it. Now that we're arriving at camp, I'm going to put a bunch of days worth of information clips together to show you what goes on here. There's a little sign up above telling us which way to go. First thing we do is go to the food prep area. There's a food prep area and campfire community area here and we have to hang our food. Okay, so some other people already have their stuff hung up. 
And there's little things to tie off on here. This is our food prep area. The campfire area is over there. And this is where we'll, first we drop off anything that smells at all. We're going to leave it all here and then we'll find a campsite in a second. Oh, there's a bear pole. The little map of the campground is kind of confusing because we're in this one and it's actually like here. So these are all... The map is not to scale. And so our campsite is just down there and up a little bit. There are six campsites total. And we're in this one over here. Nice little flat spot. I haven't put the fly on the tent yet. And there's an outhouse right there. Yeah, so oh, I'm not even going to get into the nightmare uh, advanced reservation process we went through to get this site. But you can also get walk up half or reserve in advance, half or walk up. And we can see the lake right out there if it is through the trees and the mountain. Yeah, and uh, I guess they have sort of these campgrounds in the backcountry. Every so often there's a different campground. And they have us all sort of in one spot because of the grizzly bears and the thickness of the forest and everything. But mainly because of the bears, for the safety, they have the food prep area and stuff. There are certain parts of Glacier Park where they have the dispersed camping, but the majority of the park has these little mini campgrounds it's every 8 or 10 miles. If you've been watching My Own Frontier and other people like that, you really might want to take a look at the backcountry map for Glacier, and that would explain a lot. You know, a lot of those hikes make a lot more sense when you know the names of the campgrounds and how they're organized. And the map will show you all of that, the Glacier National Park backcountry map. And here's the view from the little beach. So the individual tent sites are fairly well spread out, but we're all in the communal fire pit food prep area, so everybody is kind of on top of each other while they're in camp. Then we had a minor incident and I had to climb up the pole to help free one of those, but no oh well. And look at this, everybody's got a catadine filter today. Yeah, no pumping for anybody. So as you come down into the campground, you got the little food prep area and the campfire and most of the campsites are that way. That's where we are. We like to be near the toilet and away from the loud water, but now that everybody's left, I'll show you the other couple sites over here because these are sort of considered the premium best sites. The other problem would be that this, these two sites are right on top of each other. So we really didn't want to camp here, but these ones are right on the lake. Yeah, these are right on the lake, but it's a lot louder from the creek. And the two sites are right next to each other, which was really nice for that large group of women, seven women all traveling together and they had two sites. And that's really cool that they do that. They actually said their husbands and boyfriends don't come out. And so they leave them at home. Yeah, although the campground area has been more crowded than we would like, the hiking has been very few people and everybody here is really nice. So it's not, not terrible to have some company. It's a little safer. Yesterday it was so crowded that the guy who got up first took his bag down and it got so tangled up he had to retie everyone else's back up. And I want to mention some other people had some hung up and they had the rope down and at the bottom of the rope they had a carabiner and they were trying to take up the slack of between the carabiner and the top of the rope with a knot and it kept slipping out. It was just the bag was slowly sliding down towards the ground so you got to be careful. You definitely you can't leave any loose knots. So this big dry bag is a good idea. It was 27 bucks. I got the top of my pack on here also just because it's got some other stuff. And one thing that I did, I attached this thicker rope to my paracord. And then when I'm using the bear bag, I can tie it off here and the bag just hangs nice and accessible. And then I don't lose my spot or have to retie it or anything. Real easy, just untie this and hook it back up to the pole there. Because the bag, I can just unclip it oh, drop the other one but and then I got access two minor screw-ups I want to note first this couple they started a fire and then walked away to their camp which left me more or less in charge of their fire which you can't do that you can't walk away from your fire but at least it was in a fire ring what I did was much worse I had lowered my bear bag and then I walked away from it for a good 10 minutes I thought I would be right back and I, I wasn't and I, you shouldn't even walk away from it at all. You can't lower your bear bag and walk away from it. You have to walk away from it hanging up. Very wrong of me to leave everyone else in charge of my food basically.
That's about it for the information section. So from here, things will go in order as we did them. After setting up camp and having some food, we watched the scenery for a while. And tomorrow, we're going to do a really excellent day hike. Now, this is how we like to do snow. 80 degrees. Some of these cuts through the forest are pretty impressive. That's probably a large rock just fell from the top and tumbled all the way down, taking out everything in its path. There's a creek emptying into the lake. Numa Creek. Tiny bit of clouds. It's been like 80 degrees all day. It's beautiful. Expecting nothing but good weather. Oh, wow. Actually, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Quite a few other backpackers showed up eventually, but it was still very relaxing down at the water. And then we got a little bit of excitement. We had been warned by the ranger who gave us our permit and the campground host at Bowman Lake that there was a very aggressively salt seeking deer in the area, but we did, were not ready for this. Even though I was warned about the deer, I still left my shirt unattended for a few minutes, and when I got back, the deer had my shirt in its mouth. I told it to stop and drop it, and it did, and then it ran away. There it goes. We've been warned about this deer. He's a problem deer. He's a salt seeker. Anybody leaves any clothes around, he wants to chew on them. Go off into the forest, but I have a feeling that's nothing. We haven't seen the last of him. He's very sneaky. I had just walked past him. There he is, I caught up to him, the problem deer. He somehow got the shirt he stole wrapped around a stick. He eventually left it and I retrieved it and packed it out with me. And yeah, you know, where we were just watching him chew on that stuff, that was a good couple hundred yards that way where he had run away to and now he has come back. This is, I'm in the campsite. And he just snorted at me. He, you don't care at all, get out of here. Look at you. But at least now he's eating his natural food, I think. I'm gonna go tell this other guy who wanted to get some photos that he's come back. Looks like he hears something. That is a big one. Exploring some possible off-trail routes and I found this little animal trail. Probably a private deer. There's definitely something using this regularly. Really thankful to all the YouTubers that helped us get out here. We have chatted with My Own Frontier quite a bit. We used to exchange messages once in a while. We thought about doing a trip together, but we really can't handle the kind of long backpacking trips he does. But we do hope to meet up with him someday. And uh, I'll poke a little fun and say as the day is ending here, this is where he'd probably do a review of the day. But I'll just say, I think he just saw our day. So we'll see you in the morning. I'm the only one awake this morning. They drowned the fire. That's good. There's 10 people besides Roxana and I here. Yeah, if you've watched this before, you know Roxana and I are not huge fans of having other people around. But it is what it is. At least... Early here, there's nobody. Don't get me wrong, everyone else is real nice. It's just that we live in the city. We come out here to get away from everyone. So while they all sat around the fire last night, I sat here and just looked at the view. I could still make out the mountains pretty well till past 9.30. But I guess people like being around a fire. Anyway, we'll have breakfast and then we'll start our day hike towards Brown Pass. We won't see very many people today. Sunrise. So we're heading towards Brown Pass. We're not going to go the whole way because we've heard there's a lot of mosquitoes up there and you can't see anything from the actual pass anyway. Uh, we're going to go about half the elevation gain up. Going to be a lot of nice views. This is pretty intense. Hold on, look how... There you go, there you get an idea. Roxana's chest high in this stuff. It's so fun though. So beautiful out here and it's nice and hot. Probably almost 80. And I mean, it's not super dry, but it's not real humid either. And they get these signs at most of the crossings.
big stuff all around us. Yeah, we're just enjoying a walk in the forest. Uh, yeah, that does look kind of fresh. And right it's there. right there. Yeah, that didn't even have any flies on it. And the guy we saw only 20 minutes, half hour ago, he said he hadn't seen anything. So we're a little bit nervous. We're doing some extra yelling and stuff. Hopefully it just went across the trail and kept going. Well, my blood pressure was through the roof for about the next 15 minutes. Put Roxana up. I wasn't worried at all. I figured it was gone. And we never did see a bear, so I guess she was right. Well, that one's not as big and looks maybe a little older. I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely been there a long time. Or a while, anyway. Now we got a big rock wall up so many down trees everywhere. The park service has really cut down a lot of trees, cut a lot of them out of the way. There we go, there's some mountain. Only Roxanne to show you how deep it is. I've seen a number of very large hoof prints. I'm not sure if they're moose or elk, but something has been on the trail. Looks like we found a good break spot. We're gonna drink lots of water, refill our water. We brought our filter, of course. So you believe it. We're gonna sit right there for a while. Things got a little interesting here. You have to get up there. This is definitely not the right way. We're supposed to go that way, but we couldn't really figure it out. Well, we know a further way back. Yeah, between the map and this very fresh stuff, they obviously just rerouted the trail a little bit. I think the stream crossing was closer to here, or maybe even further up at one point. It's like hiking in a jungle. I'm sure it's not, but it feels like it. It only looks like bear, but that's a lot smaller. That's more like, that's only that big. That's a little less scary. We've started climbing up. The river's way down there now. So, we just ran into some people coming down. We're a little over five miles. We're not gonna go all the way to the pass. Especially since those people told us there's some grizzly bears that live up there and the ranger had seen one yesterday. So, but at least uh, they didn't see one today and they came down there making noise and stuff. So, we feel pretty safe. The bugs are getting bad already. We'll see how far we get from here. We've come up about a thousand feet so far.
We had a nice snack here, but the mosquitoes were terrible. We're gonna go just a little bit right over there because after that the trail starts turning up. Yeah, so from here it gets back into the trees. That's probably where the bear lives. And we've kind of come far enough. We're, I wanted to go until we lose the view and we kind of gained a huge view and we're about to lose it at the same time. The sun and clouds and angle is making the exposures tricky. There's a very slight chance of rain. I don't think it's going to rain. We might get sprinkled on a little by that. Yeah, this is weird. We can kind of see like a mist right in that area. And the wind sure is sucking out that way. There must be some low pressure out there. And the trail keeps going there. We're at about almost 5,300 feet, 5,250, something like that. So we came up about 1,200 feet, maybe 1,100, about half the way up. The bugs were getting pretty bad in the woods just below us, and they're it's nice and windy, no bugs here. That's kind of dizzying to look at this and that. Oh boy. And we'll get a last look here. All right, down we go. That dark cloud's finally passing over as we're just getting some drips. Figures the sun is out and we're dripping. Kind of amazing how accurate the weather forecast was. It said 20% chance of showers just today out of our whole trip. And that was like days before our trip. We got about a 20% shower there, just tiny little drips for a minute and back to the sun. Those trail clearing crews are hard workers. All right, and here's the last little excitement. Okay, well that is kind of marked. It also looks pretty crazy and then the trail obviously goes this way and all this blocking is that. We walked right over it. I'm gonna fix this up here. Let's take this jobby here. A little work, but they're surprisingly easy to move for how big they are, so now nobody else will make the mistake we did. So that was around ten and a half miles and 1,250 feet of gain total. We are beat. <laughs> We're about a mile away from camp. So that's about it for this hike. And yes, we spent most of the day out here. We started about 10.30 in the morning. It's a little after 7 p.m. now. We'll probably get back to camp just before 8 p.m. We took our time and enjoyed the heck out of it. And we hope you do the same when you go out. Now our buck is back again. There he goes. Going looking for more stuff to steal. There's the doe. She's not as aggressively seeking clothing as the buck is, apparently. About 9.30 p.m. Roxana's already gone to lay down. And I 
sit here for a little while. Yep, I like to look at it as much as possible while we're here. I don't know when I'll be back. The whole camp has gone to bed already. I'm here by myself. Almost 10 p.m. Soaking my feet in this blue water. And now I'm just going to sit here and look. Just after 6, a little before sunrise. We're going to head out in a few hours. Another tiny animal trail going up alongside Numa Creek right above the campground. Definitely slow going. I just had to get off the trail a little bit since I'm in the glacier here. I'm trying to make it, you know, 100 yards. I made it about 50 so far. Very thick. Actually, not as it's not terrible. Well, there's something of a something. Pretty thick stuff over here. And there's a nice cascade back there. I don't want to go too far, it'll get dangerous by myself early in the morning, but yeah, at least I got off trail a little bit. So smooth, you can see the creek flowing through the lake. There's the current right there. Roxanne is still sleeping. I'm probably going to go back to sleep for a while and then we're just going to head out. We slept in some, and also the road is closed for construction. The road to get out of Bowman Lake Campground at the other end, where we're parked, is closed in the afternoon until 3 p.m., so we have all day anyway. We might as well take our time. Such an incredible blue color. So there were a lot of people in the campground, but once you're away from the campground, very few people on the trail, and there was one campsite that, in the two nights we were there, at least one campsite never got occupied. So there are walk-ups. Yeah, successful hike. Yeah, these crews that clear the logs off of the trails. Wow, do they do some work. Let's see them now. We caught a glimpse of some people going by paddling a kayak or something. It's also possible to boat into the campground if you want. That's about it. Thanks for coming with us, everyone.